Charlton Putnam had no idea what he'd started by stepping on the train that day. To him, that step was just as uncertain as every step he'd ever taken. The Olmsted brothers' invitation to Dayton was a sign that his dream of owning his own business could soon be realized, but Charlton knew the success was not guaranteed. Never had been, never would be. Five years later, the surveying company Charlton moved to Dayton to build had become a reality. About that same time, a young Ohio State graduate walked into Charlton's office. His name was Ralph L. Wolvert. Most young men who grew up in the Midwest are honest hard workers, and Ralph Wolvert was no exception. He was a man who dedicated himself to perfecting his craft, who led by serving others, and believed that in business, as in life, people are what matter most. Charlton handed the company over to Ralph in 1936 to pursue other dreams. For the next 34 years, Ralph grew and diversified the firm's services and his people until he passed away in 1970. Ralph Wolpert was certainly the person that's been most critical to our success, having led the firm for nearly 50 years. Ralph's qualities of integrity, fairness, very humble, being a soft-spoken, quiet leader, but highly respected in the industry and community, is a testament to who the firm is today and the reason the firm still bears his name. Ralph was truly a great man, and it's an honor for all of us to follow in his footsteps. I remember it was very sudden. Most of us did not know that he had been ill at all. And um, we got a call very early in the morning that Mr. Wolpert had passed away that night. And they closed the office and out of respect for him. It was kind of a, a very startling thing for a new employee as what's going to happen with the company. but. You know, we had a very good partnership and they took over and continued along the same lines that Mr. Wolpert had run the company for so many years before that. Uh, he left the firm in great shape. He left it to six strong partners, each partner running a different aspect of the company. Uh, the company, again, was doing work at that time throughout Southwest Ohio. We were continuing to add services. So I'm sure that Ralph, uh, at the end of the day, met his personal and professional goals in life. One of the wonderful things about Wolpert over the years as I've been in here is being able to talk about stories, you know, how the firm was founded and who we work for. Uh, and, and there's probably three great entrepreneur inventors that uh, grew up here in, in Dayton, Ohio that we actually started working for. Dayton was considered and labeled a city of innovation. You had the Wright brothers uh, sitting in Dayton, Ohio with aircraft. You had Patterson. You had Kettering. You had Deeds. All those names are, are recognized no matter where I go in the U.S. Um, they know the names, they know the companies, and they know the things that these individuals did. And the, and the neat thing is Wolpert was a part of of helping serve that in their industries that they were building here in Dayton. Again, going from a very small two-dimensional firm of engineering and surveying and a limited number of people, fast forward that 50 years to the 1960s, we're now a mid-sized firm, much more diversification, and we're really dominating the Dayton market at that time in the 1960s. There was a huge post-World War II demand for housing in the Dayton area, and, and in fact there was demand during World War II. Dayton is crammed, jammed, up to its neck, over its ears. Every living facility taxed. A city coming out at the seams. And Wolpert was involved in most of the major uh, housing developments in the Dayton area at that point in time, which included uh, parts of Oakwood, uh, Kettering, Centerville, and, and probably most significantly, uh, Huber Heights. I picked that as a place to live because of the great design of the area and, and the, the feeling of community that's built into it. It's interesting and fun to look at our geographic expansion uh, over the last hundred years. I'm sure day one with Charlton Putnam and Ralph Wolpert, uh, it was probably quite challenging to do a project from the northern part of Montgomery County to the southern part of Montgomery County. Then came the 1970s, we made that giant leap from Dayton, Ohio, all the way down to Cincinnati, you know, a full hour and a half from one office to another. 
And then in the 80s, a lot of a lot of expansion that happened in the 80s, from opening up the Columbus office to growing throughout the Midwest, opening offices in Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, and then strategically carrying on to the Mid Atlantic region, opening offices in North and South Carolina, Virginia, and then most recently in the Southeast, opening offices in Florida, Georgia, and now out west in Colorado. One of the things leading back to our presence here in uh, in South Florida was the development of the Miami-Dade Water and Sewer GIS back in 1996. That basically came out as a result of Hurricane Andrew back in 1992, which just wiped out the landscape. And they weren't able to find any of their, their, their structures, their assets. So they, that's why they built that very accurate centimeter level uh, GIS back in the mid 90s. This project was very significant to Wolpert. One, it helped us establish our Miami office, promoting growth uh, more nationally, as well as it was probably the first project of its size and complexity that was done in the United States at the time. Well, for years, we've been tracking our infrastructure, we've been building infrastructure, we've been repairing and improving infrastructure, whether it's roads, sanitary systems, buildings, no, no matter what the piece of inf infrastructure we're talking about, Wolpert's been involved in that from since 1911. When Wolpert got into the mapping business in the late 60s, um, it was a very manual process. Everything was hard copy and it was truly more of an art. Over the last 25 years, there's been major advancements in technology. Um, not much changed until the late 80s. In the late 80s, Wolpert made a huge investment in analytic stereo plotters which basically meant that we were now mapping digitally but still producing a hard copy product. That stayed the same until the early 90s. Early 90s we made the transition to PC based mapping. So when Wolpert entered the mapping business in the late 60s, a big project would have been five square miles. It would have been a huge project. It would have cost a million dollars to do a highly detailed map. Now today we can fly imagery of an entire state and deliver an entire state worth of imagery for that same million dollar budget and deliver it in about the same time frame. Well, Wolpert really moved into design as we know it today in the early 70s with the addition of planning, landscape architecture, ultimately architecture, and we've added uh, support engineering disciplines. With that move, we began designing more parks, recreation, that really supplemented our private development work, uh, moving into broader applications of uh, commercial development, uh, mixed use developments, uh, master plan communities. And I think the, that integration of design services is what has begun to distinguish Wolpert in the marketplace. A good example of a project like that might be uh, the Falls of the Ohio, which even though it's a number of years old now, is a, sort of a precursor of where I think we're going in the future. It integrated our um, planning and design of cultural historic resources as well as architecture, landscape architecture, engineering, a number of different types of en engineering to create a very special place that needed that integration of design. We got involved with working with the military back in the mid 80s um, and, and we're fortunate to be among the first in into the into this uh, new area um, and really our focus then was master planning and and photogrammetry um, since then it's grown significantly um, to all areas of the firm our strategy for the next hundred years will be one that's focused on uh, being an industry leader, uh, growing uh, our firm, being an employer of choice. We are in a uh, people business and we're very much committed to, uh, to being sought out as an employer of choice for their staff. And then lastly, is really being a high performance firm, uh, which we believe if we meet the first two goals, uh, being a high performance firm will uh, be a product of those two. When we look at future, I think there's many of us uh, within the firm that's very optimistic. Uh, again, there's going to be a lot of changes. Uh, again, if you take a look at the last hundred years, many, many changes in the industry. And we can fully expect that to continue for the next 50 to 100 years. Looking forward to the future, I think we're going to be seeing more and more of a 3D world. I mean, we're already seeing it 
in, in consumer type applications from video games to navigation in our cars. You know, that the future, we're going to be delivering all of our geospatial products and services into a true 3D environment. Now and in the future, clients need to be able to integrate systems to be able to solve their problems. Individual systems really are designed to solve individual problems and they need to come together. And the only way to do that is with integration. And a lot of the work that we're doing is really focused on allowing those systems to come together in that way. Wolpert's experience with diverse clients and projects has really put us in a unique position for the future. We have seen a great deal of public-private partnerships as well as integrated project delivery. And this helps us tackle large, complex projects. As Wolpert moves forward, the way we're going to have an international footprint is by leveraging the things that are unique to us in the U.S. and the things that they don't have internationally. We may see in the future more regional neighborhood type uh, treatment facilities with closed loop systems. We may see more reclaimed water use for various things like flushing commodes or irrigation and uh, that type of thing. And we'll see more stormwater harvest and, and use for different purposes. Change detection, Wolper, that's another big piece. Um, Wolpert is focusing on that, we call it 4, 4D, the fourth dimension, that is the dimension of time um, and the change between time. So we may have a data acquisition last year and we're comparing and, and identifying changes in those two data sets from last year to this year. As we look to the future uh, with the importance of sustainability, and that's economic as well as environmental and cultural in terms of serving people's needs, that integrated look at sustainability is a real strength that we're pursuing. It's my understanding that Ralph Wolpert always had this thought and belief uh, that Wolpert should be a company for its people and Wolpert has continued to carry that on throughout the years. Uh, in my 26 years of being with Wolpert, I can say that that has always been the case. Employees are always first. Wolpert is a company of people. We recognize that people will, will be the most important product that we can offer. Ralph Wolpert saw that many, many years ago when he tried to establish a culture of Wolpert being a professional services firm and recognizing that people were our greatest asset. Fulfilling the American dream and fulfilling the dream here at Wolper, we've seen a, a pattern of dreams that have come true over the last hundred years. Again, if you go back to day one with Charlton Putnam relocating from New England to Ohio with his dream of creating and establishing a new engineering firm in Dayton, Ohio, uh, he was successful. He was able to, to accomplish that dream. To Ralph Wolpert, to wanting to create a firm of people, to add additional partners uh, to the company, to expand our work throughout Southwest Ohio. Uh, we have more dreams that are still yet to come true. Uh, we have a uh, aggressive strategic plan that we're all working on, but there's nothing stopping us. There's absolutely nothing stopping us for success.